again. I'm out walking in the snow, trying out some new spikes on this icy trail. Gonna be trying out these new spikes today. Just slip them onto your hiking boot. Give that a try on this icy road. There's a little bit of fresh snow, maybe an inch or two. I'm up here near Crystal Mountain Ski Resort, tromping along this Forest Service Road. Such a pretty day. A little bit of blue sky once in a while, a little bit of snow falling occasionally. It's just great to be out in the woods. I'm looking for a scene to paint. I want to do a little oil painting. I don't have any particular thing in mind. I want to walk for a bit. I get a little exercise when I'm out on these hikes, so I don't want to stop too soon. But then again, on these short winter days, I don't want to walk too long or else I'll lose the daylight. Well, I'm glad I have these spikes. I'm going down a bit of a decline here, and it is slick, hard ice under that little bit of snow. I'd be slipping and sliding without them. Well, I've been walking for about an hour, a couple miles. The road, the scene is not quite opening up like I was hoping. I was hoping maybe I would reach a bend in the road and I would see some distant hills, but I came across this kind of interesting scene. I like the pattern of the snow on those fallen logs and that small pine tree with the snow on its branches. I'm thinking about setting up and painting this, see if I can make some kind of composition out of something in this scene. I'm gonna hike around this little area just a little bit and see if there's anything else that jumps out at me. I'm really just looking for a interesting value pattern, some kind of pattern of shapes, lines and values that is somehow attractive on the abstract level. I walked around the area a bit and took a look at some different scenes, different compositions. I came back to this though. I think it has some promise of being interesting. Also, it's facing northwest, so the sun should be traveling behind me for the rest of the afternoon. So maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get some different lighting effects as the sun shifts through the trees, as the sunlight falls on different spots. It might pick up something interesting that I can capture as I'm painting here. Definitely there's some nice contrast there. There's also some nice colors. It may not be coming out in the video, but there's some deep rusty reds in the wood, in the soil that's exposed. There's of course a lot of green, um, but there's a lot of different shades of green. Olive greens and yellow greens, blue greens, so that could be kind of fun as well. I have a little bit of a charcoal sketch in, just the big shapes, just to give me a, a starting point for my turpentine wash. Quick rundown on my palette. I've got Artist Turpentine here, Titanium White, a little bit of Liquin. I, I like using Liquin Original because it helps the paint flow. It also helps the paint dry a little faster in case I want to touch it up. Cerulean Blue, just a tiny bit of Thala Blue for that background electric blue sky. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, sap green, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow, cad yellow 
lemon and yellow ochre so pretty much my standard colors in the scene I see of course a lot of green a lot of brown but behind those colors I'm seeing some nice burnt sienna in the wood and in the soil I'm seeing some nice cadmium orange in the moss and in the branches of the trees so I think those will be my primary colors I'll lean the whole painting in that direction I think that'll also kind of contrast nicely with the warm lavender highlights I'm getting in the snow also the far background is an electric cerulean blue it's almost like a uh, phthalo blue I may just wash in a little bit of phthalo blue to act as the sky in the, the background I'm just gonna get a hint of it through the trees I'm going to be very abstract with the background trees there's no way I can paint all of those trees there's no way I even want to paint all those trees one trunk one branch at a time I want to hint at it I want to suggest them with just some dashes of different colors and values I'll put in a couple main larger trunks just to give the composition an anchor in the far background but otherwise it'll just be kind of an abstract value pattern I've been asked a few times what I'm trying to get out of painting in the woods or painting outdoors and I get a, a lot out of it. I get painting ideas, I get inspiration, it kind of refills my batteries, refills my creativity to be out in the woods as well, to be out in nature. I'm really enchanted and charged up by nature, so I love getting out in it. I love the challenge of it, trying to get out and capture a scene quickly. It's great practice. I'm just building up that painting muscle, if you will, building up the muscle memory of how to put down paint quickly and effectively, get it done as quickly with as few strokes as possible. If a painting comes close to what I was after, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it alone when I'm done. However, if I take it back to the studio and it's just not what I remember, it's not what I wanted it to be, I have no problem with painting over it, touching it up, scraping it off. It's just practice. There's nothing precious about each of these paintings. Um, but hopefully over time, if I do enough practice, if I train enough, then I will get some really stunning pieces of art, which is what I'm... After, that's always what I'm chasing is to become... A master of this craft and I'm not one now but hopefully this training will will pay off I sure do enjoy it I think the key I think the secret to painting really is just doing it and enjoy doing it get out side if you can that really trains the eye I think but if not paint in your studio paint from life paint from a steel life just paint I think that's how you'll become a great painter. I'm using a little turpentine on my brush here to wipe away the lightest lights where the snow is brightest. I have a little bit of lavender, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue in with the turpentine to hint at that lavender hue of the snow. Here I'm splattering the wash with a little bit of turpentine just to get a different texture, a different effect 
maybe get a hint of that snow that's on the forest floor. turpentine wash in now. I'm gonna let that set up just a little bit. Once that's set up just a little bit, I'll take that same big bristle brush. I'll wipe out as much of the turpentine as possible and then just gently blend the scene. Take away some of the streaks and some of the edges but try to leave the texture. I'll mix up some colors now. I'll start with the background and work forward. The background has some nice backlighting coming from that north sky. I'm just gonna leave the wash as it is for the sky. It's pretty light in value and that nice thalo blue is, is doing what I'd hoped. I'll wipe out a little bit of the paint as it gets closer to the horizon of the sky because it turns just a little bit warm, a little bit yellow. I may add a little bit of paint there to try to bump that up. For that background slope of trees I'm just going to go with an abstract pattern of lighter value less saturated greens and browns and just try to hint at those trees and branches I'll move forward then becoming higher in contrast and higher in chroma the chroma is the saturation so a really vibrant candy red for example versus a really pale gray red would be a difference in chroma. I'll use this smaller bristle brush now, now that the background is in place and set up, and just go in with the lightest shades of those background colors to try to hint at the branches of the trees. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make it just one kind of pattern of branches. I want to be thicker in some places, thinner in others, so I'm going to leave it there. Now I'll mix up some of the foreground colors, the darkest dark of the fallen trees, that broken stump, and the colors of the snow. I'm going to exaggerate that stump. I'm going to make it a bigger element in the foreground just to try to add some interest to the composition. 
I have some colors mixed up now. I've got these different shades for the snow. Kind of a darker lavender for the snow in the distance on this log. And then getting lighter. Then I have kind of a blue and a red and a yellow shade to give me some variation to let me hint at whether the plane of the snow is approaching me or receding and whether it's closer or farther back. I also have the darkest dark here. This is a black I mixed up using a lizard crimson, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. A little bit of burnt sienna grayed down here. Some greens for the more orange moss and then some lighter tones for the wood and that stump in the shadow. So these are muted, they're grayed down, but hopefully they'll indicate some reflected light. I'm using a darker, more vibrant shade of green on this foreground pine tree to try to bring it forward in space. I'll paint the branches first and then I'll paint a little bit of snow sitting on those branches. battery died there while I was painting and I didn't notice so I'm not sure how much of that you caught but what I did was put the brightest snow here on this log and it's kind of a yellow tinted snow to try to lead the eye to this the center of interest I added a little bit of snow here in kind of the crook in the crook of that shattered tree it's too bright right now I need to darken it a little bit I also need to darken the this side of the tree as well. I want this to read as shadow and this to read as reflected light so I need to adjust that just a little bit. But it's getting close. I also want to do a little more work on this little tree here. Or little, yeah I guess it's a young tree. It's really hard to read against the background forest floor. So maybe I'll just leave it out for now and take a look at it again in the studio and see if it's actually worth adding. I'm not sure it adds a whole lot to the, the painting. So I'll keep going and get wrapped up here pretty quick. The light is fading and I'm getting cold. Take a little coffee break and, uh, and finish up. I got finished. I am cold. It's chilly here in the woods. It's down near freezing and kind of damp today. 
but I had a great time. Really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching the painting coming along. Let me show you what I got. Here's where the scene ended up. You can see the light stayed pretty consistent. Which is nice when you're painting middle of the day in the forest. The light doesn't change a whole lot. I did see some interesting light through the day hitting the snow at different spots. So I'll take a look back through the videos and through a couple pictures I took and I might adjust the painting in the studio just a bit. Here's where I ended up. I think the illusion is there. Distance, then it comes forward, gets more detailed, a little darker, higher contrast coming forward. It's kind of dark here. I hope you can see that. I think I captured the feeling of the scene and I definitely enjoyed my time. I'll take it back to the studio and take a look at it again, adjust it a bit and put it out on my website. If you do visit my website, please sign up for my newsletter. I give away a painting once in a while to my newsletter subscribers. I also send out special notices, shows, and new artwork. So if you want to follow along, please sign up for my newsletter. As always, thanks so much for joining me. I hope I see you on the trail.